I want to talk, and probably next week and maybe the following week, I want to talk about something that has really changed my life. And uh, so wherever I go, this is what I share, and this is what I ask people. Make it part of your life. So let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. This is the Apostle Paul writing a letter to the Philippine church. He says, Be anxious for nothing, or do not worry. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finding, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Let's pray. God, I pray that your word today will truly transform lives. And I pray that the message today, it will truly be accepted to fall into good grounds and it will change lives like it changed my life, God. I know that this through meditation, God, biblical meditation has changed my life and has set me free from many things. And I pray that we as a church would truly start meditating more and more on your word, God. That your word can penetrate into our lives and set us free. Lord, we thank you for this time. And we pray that you will bless us as we look at your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. Paul starts with saying, be anxious for nothing. And we have been looking at the cell groups about uh, be anxious, do not worry. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, be anxious for nothing. What, if you're worried, what do you do? If you're worried, you're thinking about the same thing again and again and again. For example, if you're worried about how you're going to pay your bill, uh, electricity bill, it starts on Monday and you have to pay it on Friday. Then when it's Monday, it maybe starts very small, you receive the bill and, oh no, this is too high. How am I going to pay? I don't have the finances. So something starts nibbling on you and you start thinking about, how am I going to pay the bill? How am I going to pay the bill? And when it's evening, the bill is huge, okay, according to your mind. And you're thinking you can't sleep and you're tossing and uh, you get dark, dark eyes because you're not able to sleep. The next morning you feel miserable. And this problem of the electricity bill is even bigger than it was. That's what worry is. You're just thinking about the same thing. You can't change anything. It just becomes bigger and bigger. The problem becomes bigger and bigger. Now the Bible says, worry is not really permitted. God says, He commands us not to worry. It's a sin to worry. Did you know that? It's a sin to worry. Because what is worrying really? It is putting your problems above God. You're saying, oh, God can't solve my problem because my problem is so big. So that is what you're saying with worrying. Okay, but I also want to look at something else. Worrying is pondering upon the same thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. Like we were seeing in verse 8, it says we should think. Let's read that again. It says here in verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good reward, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So God is saying, we shouldn't worry. 
Where is the sin? We should instead meditate. We should instead worry about godly things. We should worry about the good things, about the lovely things. You should be pondering upon how, how, how can I get closer to God? Uh, how can I increase my prayer life? How can I reach my neighbor? Those are things we need to worry about. Those are and then we get a different turn. You don't call that worry. You call that meditation. Okay, I prefer calling it biblical meditation because when I start talking about meditation, people think of, mm, okay, that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about biblical meditation. I believe biblical meditation is from the Bible and was there even before uh, very early in the Old Testament, we find passages where it talks about meditation. And biblical meditation is taking the things as good, is taking the things as out of the Bible and meditate on that. So that is what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about transcendental meditation or all the other kinds of uh, meditations. Okay. So let's go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. So we see that the Apostle Paul is telling the church, the Philippian church, meditate, meditate. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. And you will be surprised when you read this how many times there is talking about meditation. It says here, this is a letter written to uh, Timothy, uh, Paul's disciple. So he's writing a letter in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Let's read verse 12 till 16. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So he's saying to his disciples, saying to Timothy, live a holy life. Be a good example. Till I come. Give attention to reading, to exhortation, to teaching or to doctrine. And do not neglect the gift that is in you, which, ha which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Verse 15, the Apostle Paul says to Timothy, meditate on these things. And that is what I'm going to talk about. It was important uh, to meditate. In the early church, meditation was part of devotional life. Biblical meditation was a common part of the early disciples. It was done many, sometimes many, many hours a day. Meditation. Just taking a passage and then they would memorize it and then they would meditate on that passage. And just think upon it. You have to remember, they didn't have the Word of God, so they had to memorize it, and then they would memorize it, and then they would ponder and meditate on that passage. And then the Lord would speak to them, and it will keep them on fire for the Lord. Just like fasting, which I will talk about a bit later, uh, meditation is one of the things that was done in the early church. But unfortunately, meditation is not done in the church today. And probably the main reason is, uh, I think there are two reasons, because of what is happening with Buddhism, Hinduism, we're getting a wrong view of meditation. We think, oh, this is from those other religions. We can't do that. So I can't, I can't do meditation. It's wrong. But to be honest, I believe meditation comes from the Bible. It's not coming from them. It's just Satan who's imitating meditation. And now Christians don't use it anymore, but it's very powerful. But the, another reason I think is maybe why meditation is not popular is because meditation, if you're in a rush, today's society is always in a rush. We always are busy, 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 busy. Just like bees. Bzzz. Always busy doing things. Now meditation, what it's trying to do is you just focus on one verse of the Bible and that is, that's it. 
You ponder upon them, you, you, you eat that verse and you uh, pray through that verse. That is what meditation is. And I will all, all explain and give examples what meditation is. So in today's society, because we are so rushed, we don't have time for meditation. When we come to the Lord, we come brrr, reading our chapter or whatever we need to read. We do a daily devotions. Uh, hallelujah, Lord. I pray you protect me, help me with this, 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 this. Okay, bye-bye, God. And then we're gone. See, we don't have time to meditate. Because when we meditate, it means we're going to sit down and we're going to just take one verse and ponder upon that verse again and again and again and think it over and pray through that verse. That's what meditation is. So there's maybe two reasons why it's not very popular in today's society. But let us go to Genesis. This is the Old Testament, chapter 24, 63. Now, I've chosen this passage, Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. Many people said, oh, but meditation is not biblical. But if you look at this, this passage, this is where, uh, chapter 24, verse 63, this is where uh, Isaac is going to uh, a bride for Isaac. So as the bride is coming, Isaac is meditating on a tree. Now this is at least 2,000 years before Christ. So it's now 4,000 years ago. This is what this chapter is talking about. And meditation was done at that time. So let's look at that, verse 63. Chapter 24, verse 63. It says here, Let's read verse 61. Then Rebekah and the maids arose and they rode on the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Now Isaac came from the way of Be'er Lahai Roy, for he dwelt in the south. And Isaac went out to meditate in a field in the evening. And he lifted his eyes and looked, and there the camels were coming. So what was happening? Rebekah his future wife was coming and in the meantime what was he doing it looks like maybe it was something he did regularly he would go and sit under the tree and meditate on the things of God now this is 4,000 years ago so if it's not biblical it wouldn't be in there but even Isaac did it so let's continue looking it is biblical I believe meditation is biblical let's go to Psalm chapter 5 Psalm chapter 5 if it's correct it's in the blue books if you have an English version it's in there Psalm chapter 5 verse 1 this is a psalm written by, uh, by David by King David it says here give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Give ear or hear my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. This is David. He's talking about King David. So even King David did meditation. And when you read his Psalms, it's full of using the word meditation. And it's all talking about biblical meditation. So that's what we're going to look at. Let us go to Psalm chapter 1. Because I want to look at, as we're looking, we saw that it's biblical to meditate. But what, why should we meditate? Now I want to look at some promises when we meditate. And I hope it's going to encourage you to start meditation. Because I know when I started meditating, it really totally changed my life it changed my walk with God and I know it changed inside our set three of strongholds in my life it really changed me I felt the word of God had power in my life and it was changing and healing me in ways that I never thought would be possible and I believe meditation is a way to help you in your prayer life often what I do is I read the Bible and then if something speaks to me, I will meditate on that passage or on that verse. And if nothing speaks to me, I will take another passage 
uh, what I'm regularly going through verse by verse I would take that verse and meditate on that and ponder upon that and that verse would minister to me and the Holy Spirit will speak through that verse and that often will lead us into prayer so that is why I want to share this so let's go to Psalm chapter 1 we're going to look at the promises connected with meditation why should we meditate because I believe it's going to bring many blessings that's why I want you to start meditating Psalm 1 this is known as the psalm that talks about meditation blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in a path of sinners nor sits in a seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night he shall be like a tree Planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now let's look at that again. It's talking about the benefits of meditation. First of all, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the godly. So when we walk as a Christian, God says we will be blessed. Number two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Now, the thing, what I notice with me, and when you look at this passage, meditation will help you to appreciate the word of God. So that is what is happening here. His delight is in the law, is in the word of God. And in his law he meditates day and night. When we meditate on the word of God, we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, is that a good sign or a bad sign? It's a good sign. There is always water. The tree will never die because there is always water. And it is fresh water because it's running. It's a river. So it's a good sign. It means we always will be refreshed, isn't it? There will always be freshness in us. As a Christian, we need that. We need some refreshing. So when we meditate on the Word of God, it will bring freshness in your life, in your walk with God. That brings forth its fruit in its season. It promises here when we meditate, it will bring forth fruit. Now one of the things that we as Christians need to bear is fruit. God wants us to bear fruit. But I also believe that this is showing that there will be fruit in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness. I believe as we meditate on the Word of God, all these things will grow in our lives. Whose leaf also shall not wither. This is another promise. Our leaves will not wither. That's a good sign. Always we will be bearing leaves, we will be shade and a blessing to people. We will always have enough. We don't have to shut ourselves off from the cold. We will always be refreshed. We always look beautiful. And then, this is most of the time what will encourage people. It says here, if we meditate on the word of God, it says here, whatever you do shall prosper. Whoa. I just want you to read it again. Whatever you do shall prosper. This is a promise of God when we meditate on the word of God. Do you realize it? So whatever you're going to do, God says, I'm going to prosper. If you meditate on my word and ponder on my word, I am going to bless you and prosper you. That's a promise of God. 
Does it sound good? This is just a few promises. I want to look at a few more. But he says, you will be like a tree. You will be planted at the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in its season. Whose leaves shall not wither. And whatever you do shall prosper. Reading the Bible is very good. I really believe we all should read the Bible. But reading the Bible is like water falling on hard and dry ground. You just can't get in there. It's like on hard soil. Meditation is like opening up the soil so the water can get in. So reading the Bible is good because you get understanding of the Word of God. You know what is in the Word of God. But I compare it with like when it rains and the ground is hard and solid, the water can't get in, can't soak in. But meditation is what opens up the grounds and let the water come in. Let the Word of God come in and soak in and change us. That's what I believe meditation is. Let's go to Psalm 39 verse 3. I really hope I, I'm going to get you uh, hungry to start meditation. I hope as we look at the promises of God, it's going to minister to you and you say like, whoa, let me start tonight. All right, let's start meditation. Psalm 39, verse 3. This is a, a psalm from David. It says here, My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned and then I spoke with my tongue let's read it again my heart was hot within me and while I was musing the fire burned and then I spoke with my tongue the word musing if you look in the Hebrew is also the same word meditation Musing means pondering, meditating upon something. Maybe some translations will have it translated with meditation. So it says here, my heart was hot within. While I was meditating, the fire burned. And then I spoke with my tongue. Now what do you think this means? What is happening while David is meditating on the word of God? He was getting all hot. Now, if I look at Christians today, do you really get inspired when you look at a Christian? Or if you look at the majority of the Christian, they look like, they've had it today. If they get a little bit more, then they will fall over. It's like, <sighs> when you look at Christians, are they on fire for God? Or are they all how do you call it? Fallen away, backslidden. I believe this passage is talking about that. It's promising us when we meditate on the Word of God, the fire of God will keep us going. When we meditate, the fire will be stoked up, it will like be burning, boiling, going. So I believe meditation is going to help you to keep your fire for the Lord. That's another important reason why we should meditate on the Word of God. It will keep you from backsliding. And do you know what? Revelation chapter 3, it says, even if we are lukewarm, God will vomit us out. God hates lukewarmness. God hates people who are sitting on the fence. God hates people. Lukewarmness means you're not hot, you're not cold. It's a mixture of both. And God says, I want you to be hot. If you are a follower of me, I want you to be hot and on fire. That's what God says. Otherwise, he foments you out. He doesn't want anything to do with you if you're lukewarm. You can look it up. It's in uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, if I'm correct. Or first 18. But this passage is saying, My heart was hot within me while I was meditating, the fire of God burned in me. Whew. Maybe that's why we need to start meditating on the Word of God. 
Are you sometimes feeling that your fire, your candle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller? I really believe. Start meditating on the word of God. And the fire will start getting bigger and bigger and bigger so that your fire can touch other people and ignite their fires. Meditate on the word of God. Powerful, isn't it? Just meditate on the word of God. Take his word and meditate. Ponder upon it. Muse upon it. Just think upon it. Awesome. So from now on, we're going to have many Christians on fire for the Lord. Uh, let's go to the next passage. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua, this is a promise. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua had a very heavy task. He was the follower of Moses. And his task was to conquer the new promised land. God has called Moses away and he was saying, Joshua, you're the next one. Now that's heavy. Just remember there were a few million uh, Jewish people here and uh, Moses just died, the leader who's taken them out of Egypt. And now Joshua is standing before this promised land all full of enemies and God says, okay, you go and conquer that land. Oh, that's, he probably had a little bit worries. Now, let us see what God tells him to do. Chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1. Let's read first uh, 1 till 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. So he is saying, go. Okay, you're the next one. It's your time to lead the people every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given you as I said to Moses so wherever they are going to stand God is giving that to them 4 from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river the river Ephrates all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory no man this is still God talking. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. That is good. It's good to have God on your side. God is saying the same to us today too. He also says, promises us, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Then he says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. So God is saying live out a holy life. Do follow my commandment when you do that I will prosper you wherever you go I will prosper you then verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night now if meditation is not important why would God tell him to meditate on the law Because it's important. Because it's going to help him to walk with the Lord. But let us see what God says when he meditates on the word of God. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe 
to do according to all that is written in it. See, meditation helps us to live out the Christian life. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. This is what God promises us. When we meditate on the Word of God, what is happening when you meditate? You meditate on it, and as you meditate, it's going to change you and help you to walk a Christian life. And God says when you meditate on the word of God, he will make you prosperous and he will make you successful. Verse 8. Now, I don't know about you, but who likes to be successful? Who likes to be prosperous? I see one person. Praise the Lord. Huh? We all like to be successful and prosperous. That's probably what we're all dreaming about, to be successful and prosperous. Now, the way to do that is by meditating on the Word of God. I really believe that when we meditate, God will make you successful and prosperous. Let's go to Psalm 119. Are you getting a little bit excited about meditation? Good. Psalm 119. We're not going to look at the whole psalm, okay? Just verse 97 till 99. Psalm 119. It's a good psalm to read sometimes. It's speaking about the Word of God. But this passage is talking about meditation. Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Now, what is happening here? David is talking about meditation, and I believe David did a lot of meditation. But let's see what he says. He says, oh, I love your law. It's my meditation all the day. And I believe that's connected. When we meditate, it will help you to appreciate and love the word of God. 98. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my servants. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies are my meditation. So what is happening here? As he is meditating on the word of God, what will happen? God says, as you meditate on the word of God, he's going to make you wiser than your enemies. And he's going to give you more understanding than all your teachers. Whoa. So one day you will be standing here. Because I can sit there. Because you're meditating on the Word of God. See, God says, when you meditate on the Word of God, I'm going to make you wiser than your enemies. Wow. That's a great promise. It's good to have some wisdom, especially when you have enemies. But He also says, I will give you more understanding than your teachers than all my teachers so God will give you more and more understanding of the word of God as you meditate on the word of God and as you meditate you will be able to share and teach other people wow that's a big promise So let's go to the last one, Jeremiah chapter 15. I like this one, okay. Jeremiah chapter 15. First, chapter 15, verse 16. Now what is meditation? Meditation is something like eating the word, pondering upon the word, wrestling with the word. Okay? So here, let's look. Verse 16. 
Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Your words were found, and I ate them. I meditate on them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. So what does God promise when we meditate? It will give us joy. It will make us all excited. Now, when I look at this bunch today, I don't know. Let me see if there's any people meditating here. It makes us joyful. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Do you feel joyful? Do you have a deep inner joy in you? As you say, it doesn't matter what happens, even if you, your house falls down and it burns and your car explodes, I don't know what happens. You still, hallelujah, God, praise the Lord. Do you have that excitement in you, that joy inside of you, that no matter what, you know it's going to be okay? God says when you meditate on the word of God, you will be joyful. You will be rejoicing now just imagine you are not a Christian okay and uh, your friend is a Christian and this friend is all the time all the time <sighs> praise the Lord God is so good <sighs> Do you think your friend who's not a believer will get excited about God? Oh boy, I have to go to church again. It's already Sunday. So early. I'm so tired. Your friend is really going to get on fire for God, isn't it? He's going to open up, say, Yes, I want that God you've got. No, it's not going to work, is it? We're not going to have any impact at all. But just imagine, if you have the joy of the Lord and the fire of the Lord in you, and problems come on your path, and it just seems like, hallelujah, praise God, and you feel that you have joy in you, and you say, ah, oh, come on, let's go to church today. Do you think that the person will open up while you have struggles and difficulties, they still see you walking faithfully with God and you're rejoicing and it doesn't seem to worry you because you know your trust is in the Lord what do you think is going to have more impact probably the last one isn't it where you are full with the joy of the Lord where you're full on fire for God and just going and doing the things of God Now I believe biblical meditation will help you in your Christian walk. And these are some promises God has given to us when we meditate on the Word of God. I compare meditation with, with like eating of a cow. I don't know if you know, but in Holland there are many cows, okay? Almost every corner there is a cow, okay? There are many cows in Holland. It's a lot of milk. Now, what does a cow do? A cow eats grass. But that's not finished. It doesn't go from grass into milk. There's a whole process in between. So the, the cow eats grass, lots of grass. And then it goes and lies down. And what does it do? It's chewed again. You will see that mouth going. I can't do it, okay? It goes... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay? <laughs> they are chewing the grass again. Now, why is that? That's what I compare meditation with. You read the Word of God. Praise to God. That's good. I believe in that. But meditation is like chewing your grass again. So you can get more vitamins out of it. That's what a cow is doing. He's chewing the grass again so it can become milk. He's getting all the vitamins out of the grass. And that is what meditation is doing. We chewing the Word of God. Again, you read it, 
And if something jumps out to you and speaks to you, you take that passage, even if it's one verse, you take the passage and you chew over that passage again and again and again. And so you can get the vitamins out of it. You can get the minerals out of it. So it can be your milk and give you strength to keep on walking the walk of God. That is what meditation is. Reading the Bible is preparing yourself. But meditation is what I believe is the link between reading the Bible and prayer. Meditation will help you to get into prayer. It's really helpful for me from med- to read the Bible, then I meditate on something, and it helps me to enter into prayer. Let's close with Psalm chapter 19. This passage is talking about the Word of God, but I'm talking about biblical meditation. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. This passage is talking about a word of God but because biblical meditation is meditating on a word of God. I believe this also applies to when we meditate. Let's read it together. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And verse 13, Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is talking about it will help you, the word of God will help you to live out a Christian life. It will help you to live out, God has very high standards for Christians. God says be perfect because I'm perfect. God wants us to live holy lives. God wants us to be totally dedicated to Him and Him alone. God hates anything else coming between Him and you. He wants total surrender. And I believe when we meditate on the Word of God, it will help us to walk a worthy walk with the Lord. It will help us in our daily walk with God. Next time, I'm going to talk about how to meditate in a practical way. I'm going to show you step by step how to meditate. I'm going to take a passage and then we're going to meditate it all together. And then I hope you'll be able to understand what meditation is and how you do it. Okay? I will do that next time. I hope it encourages you to meditate. It changed my life totally, and I never want to let it go anymore because it's such a blessing to me. It helps me to walk closer with the Lord. It helps me to understand the Word of God and helps me to apply the Word of God because when you read, it's in the head, but meditation is in the heart. That's exactly what happens when you meditate on the Word of God. It goes from your head to your heart. And that is what God is interested in. He's interested in our heart. Not in what we have in our head. God doesn't care how much you know. God wants to see how much we live out of our Christian life. So let us just take a moment of silence. And if this spoke to you, something spoke to you, and you want to make meditation part of your life just give it to God and ask him to help you to make meditation part of your life let's just have a moment of silence and then I will close with a blessing
Lord, I thank you for biblical meditation. I thank you, God, for your precious word. And I know, Lord, it changed my life. And I thank you for the promises connected with meditation. And I truly pray that your word will change lives here, God. I truly pray that we will meditate more and more on your word, God. That we will ponder upon your word, God. So it can strengthen us. So it can change us. And make us more like Jesus. God, we thank you for your precious word. I thank you that we can even hold your word in our hands. We are so blessed. God, we thank you that your word will set us free. We thank you that your word will give us life, abundant life. We thank you, God, that you're a loving God. You're a God who wants to give us a future and a hope. We thank you for that. And I pray as we meditate on your word, God, that we will truly change. And we will grow closer and closer to you, God. And we will be a, a good witness for your kingdom and glory. And we will have the joy of the Lord always in us. And your fire will always be burning in our lives, God. That we will be always be on fire for you. God, we give you praise and glory. And we thank you for your precious word today. And we love you, Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I bless you with good health and a long life. May the Holy Spirit make you strong in body, mind, and spirit. May God's angels be with you to protect you and keep you from any evil or wrongdoing. I bless your prayer life and I bless the time when you read the Word of God. May the Scriptures be opened up to you and may your understanding increase daily concerning the Word of God. God bless you with success and may, gra may God's grace be upon your home that may be a place of rest and renewal a haven of peace where sounds and joy and laughter will fill the place where love and acceptance of one another is consistent God bless you with happiness and contentment God bless you with hope and a good outlook on your life I bless your hands so that your hands may be a blessing for many people God bless you with a clear direction and obedient heart to the Spirit of God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And everyone says, Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. And please stay behind and have some snacks and drink. God bless you.